Well, good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. I'm going to do a little bit of a different video today. I'm not going to be cooking, but I'm, as the title told y'all, I'm going to share Thanksgiving dishes, Thanksgiving menu. Practically everything I cook for Thanksgiving and Christmas, the grandkids call it the feast, I've given you all the recipes already in videos. So I went through and looked up the numbers and wrote them down. So if you want to go and get you a pencil and paper while I'm uh, talking to y'all for a minute, then you can write down the number uh, of what you think you will want to cook for Thanksgiving. And you'll have from Saturday, from today, to until uh, Thanksgiving to watch them and jot down the recipes if you haven't already and you can use some of the dishes that I serve my family. I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. I'm going to have, I know for sure my daughter and her family will be here. So, it, you know, when you got kids around, it just makes it a lot more lively and a lot more fun. So, we're blessed to have food to put on the table and um, blessed to have the know-how to do it. Just blessed all the way around and I'm very thankful. Now, I always cook. We don't like turkey, so I don't do turkey. I'm sorry uh, if y'all were wanting me to show how to do a turkey. The year before last, I spatchcocked a turkey, and we smoked it on the, I think it was year before last. Anyway, we smoked it on the Primo, which is like the big green egg, only it's made in the USA. And it was good, but we are not big fans of turkey, so we always have a ham. And I, I just buy a spiral ham and bake it according to what it says, or what is it, 10 or 12 minutes a pound. And that's what we have for our meat. And I use uh, usually thighs and chicken breast to boil and make the broth for my dumplings and my chicken and dressing. Um, so now you know we're not turkey people. So have you got your pencil and paper and are you ready to go? Because I've got my list. Got my list ready. And I'll tell y'all something else that I do. I make me a timetable. We usually eat about 3 o'clock in the evening. And so I'll tell myself that at 7 or 6, whatever, I start boil my chicken. Where it can cool and I can debone it. Um, get my celery and onions chopped. And I have me a timetable. Put the roll, I usually use Rhodes frozen rolls. It's easier on a day when I'm make, making a big meal than trying to make homemade bread. So I tell, on my paper, I have it designated what time I need to get the rolls out to where they'll have the two, two and a half hours to rise before meal time. So if you'll have everything designated, uh, time-wise in a sequence you won't forget something and it makes it so much easier to be able to check your list off and know you have it done. Now we always have chicken and dumplings and that is video number 15. My mom made those dumplings all my life. I learned to make them and I've been making them for 40 something years. They're very good. So you have my exact method in that video. Number 15 is chicken and dumplings. And I made a little thing of uh, chicken and dressing, video 138. And I used the rest of my sister Manasco's cornbread for that dressing. And the cornbread is number 133. You can use bought cornbread mix. You can use whatever cornbread you want to. But that gives you what I put in that dish of and I, you know, it's almost exactly like how I make it, only I used my canned chicken in that dressing, and I boil, uh, and I like the bone in it when I'm boiling it to make the broth for my dressing and dumplings. So, the chicken and dressing is 138. That's the two main things that, you know, and then I do the sides. We always have a tomato pie. My very first video was tomato pie. And I used puff pastry in that one. But I came back in video 136 and I did tomato pie tartlets. And I used bought pie crust and that's my favorite. So, you know, you can go by video number one. 
but the best thing to do is to use a bought pie crust and I use the ones that come in the dairy section. There's two in the box, Pillsbury. And I roll it out bigger than my pan where I'll have the tart amount to fold back up over it. But we always have a tomato pie. And uh, we always have green beans or peas or greens. Uh, video number 42 is how I cook fresh green beans. That's a wonderful side. Video 155 is how I cook fresh collard greens and frozen butter beans. Now the frozen butter beans could be uh, purple hull peas, it could be cream peas, it could be frozen black eyed peas, same method. Video 155. Video 163 is the jalapeno cheese corn that makes a wonderful side. So uh, that can use frozen corn or you can drain your canned corn and use it. It's easy and uh, it's something that we like. Now I also gave you the, re the recipe and method for making the baked squash casserole. Number 26, that's a good side dish made with yellow squash. You might want to do that one, number 26. Number 125 was the creamed spinach. That is yummy. You can make it in that casserole. You can cook some wonton wrappers down in a, a muffin tin and put it in there to have a little different presentation. But that, uh, it's number 125, the creamed spinach. I like onion shortcake. It's video number 12. Uh, I had made that for y'all with the Vidalia onions, but any sweet yellow onion will work for that one. Gourmet cabbage is 116, and that's delicious. That's a good side dish to go with dressing and the dumplings. I always make a broccoli cheese casserole, number 87, and I always make corn casserole, number 86. And if I'm not mistaken, I gave y'all a video, a photo of the recipe. And just go right by those recipes. It makes a wonderful side dish. I like the Harvard Beets, number 75. I like because it adds another pop of color to the uh, plate. But I also like beets, so that's a good one. If you want a potato dish besides potato salad, um, Number 72 is a hash brown casserole, and it's very good. Potato salad, and here, and I'm fixing to start on the salads now, if you want to put a separate little line and put the salads separately. Uh, I always make Waldorf salad. For me, I'm the only one who likes it, but it's number 73. Then I had uh, number 47. It's the Luby's uh, Cafeteria Carrot and Raisin, if anybody wants to make that one. 45 is how I make English pea salad. We have that a lot on holiday meals. Number 67 was potato salad. Number 37 is not really a salad, but I think it could lean either way, a side or a salad, and it's the copper pennies, and it's the carrots that are seasoned uh, to me, they could take the place of baked beans if you know if you needed them for something. But number 37 is the copper pennies, and number three is a fabulous coleslaw that you can make days ahead, and it's still very good. It's the one that you heat your vinegar and sugar and stuff and pour it over your bell peppers, onions, and cabbage. You can get that one done ahead of time, and it's really good. I love it with chicken and dressing. Okay, so we've color, covered the salad and the sides and then the main things. Now, there's a good choice of desserts. I usually always make pecan pie, and my pecan pie is video number seven. And if you're new to my channel, everybody that's tried that recipe that have, has always had failures on pecan pie said it worked perfectly for them. So number seven, and that was my mother-in-law's pecan pie recipe, and she made the best in the whole world. So pecan pie is number seven. If you want something that's easy and doesn't have to be cooked, number 18 is a peanut butter pie. It's good, it's not super rich, and uh, it's easy to make. You can make it ahead of time. 
The number 99 is the fresh apple cake that had the marchita cherries in it. Very festive, very good, and it freezes well, the leftovers. I usually have that. Now some people want a banana pudding on special occasions. Homemade banana pudding, number 51. That's a good banana pudding. Number 24 was the earthquake cake. It's rich and it's good. Number 140, if you're wanting a pumpkin dish because it's Thanksgiving, it's the pumpkin crunch cake. That is so easy and it is rich, rich, rich and it's delicious. I made the pineapple pie. A lot of y'all tried it and liked it. Number 153, something a little different and it's very good too. The fruit cocktail cake is one of my favorites. That's number 59. Pumpkin bread, if you're wanting just a pumpkin side, something pumpkin. Maybe for breakfast that morning with coffee and then, you know, kind of tide you over. That's number 172. And that one's tried and true. I've had that for years. Remember I made the fig preserve cake with the buttermilk glaze on it? it you could almost squeeze the juice out of it. That's number 41. And last but not least that I've chosen to remind y'all of today is the chocolate cobbler, number nine. Let me tell you what, every time I make it, there's none left. It's easy, doesn't seem like it's gonna work out when you see how you're supposed to do it, but it's delicious. It's good with whipped cream on it, it's good with ice cream on it, and it's we don't ever put anything on it. It's good plain, just dip it out and eat it. So I hope that y'all have something in this list, and this isn't near all of the recipes that I've done, but this is the ones that most of the time are on my Thanksgiving uh, table. Now, of course, I don't do all of those sweets, but we do always have pecan pie, and most of the time I'll make uh, a coconut pie. And my coconut pie filling is the filling that I make for the banana pudding. All you have to do is add about a three-fourths to a cup of coconut to it, and you've got the filling for a uh, coconut pie. So you have a good variety there to choose from. Let me know what you choose if you use some of this. Comment after Thanksgiving or whatever. Let me know what you've used and how your family liked it. There's some more casseroles that if y'all don't like dressing um, and chicken and dumplings, there's some more casseroles that are that have meat in them that I've shared with y'all. You'll just have to go back through and look at them because I'm gearing it around dressing and well, traditional Thanksgiving. But there's a lot to choose from. So I hope I've helped y'all uh, to give you the number. If you if you need to research it uh, on when you go to YouTube, search like number uh, fifteen. Apron strings, number 15, chicken and dumplings. If you put the video number in, it'll come up, but put apron strings. Apron strings, number 15, uh, and, and it should bring it up. If not, you can go to my videos and scroll down to that number because you'll, you'll know what to look for. I hope y'all are planning a wonderful meal for your family. And, or if you're going to mama's or grandma's or somebody's, I hope that you're planning to take something that they'll always remember Thanksgiving 2019. Do you remember what they brought? It was delicious. Do your part. And while I'm talking about doing your part, that means help clean up the kitchen after the meal is over. Don't eat and go take you a nap while the one that's been cooking all day long is in there cleaning up and worn slap out and can't wait for y'all to leave because they want to rest too. Do your part so that everybody can have a good day help bring the food. It costs money to make a big meal. Don't just waltz in there and eat and not help. If you can't bring something, then if they won't take it, hide a $20 bill somewhere. Do your part on helping pay for the groceries. It costs a lot to cook a big meal. Help with the cost. Do your part on cooking. Do your part on cleaning. And then enjoy each other. Play some board games. Reminisce about years gone by and other holidays and things that have brought you pleasure. And be sure to take time to enumerate the things that you're thankful for because God's been good to all of us. 
give him his thanks. That's what it's all about. It's not turkey and football. It's a time to to think back on what your blessings have been and how thankful you are. I will see y'all again on Tuesday, and I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna start making some Christmas candy and stuff. So I know that's gonna be the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, but that's gonna be my kickoff for making some some stuff for the for the rest of the year. Cause from now on, to me, it's holiday time. Christmas is coming up, and I love it. I'm gonna have my grandkids pull all my Christmas decorations out Thanksgiving. And I'll, uh, I'm off Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, so I'm planning on getting all my stuff done out in the sunroom, and I'm going to do a video and show y'all my Christmas decorations. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have a basket by the door. Put all the cell phones in it where y'all can visit with each other. I know that'll go over like a lead balloon, but boy, sure would make things nicer. I'll see y'all Tuesday. Take care of yourself and be back right here. The Lord bless you.